Hey everyone, it's Richard Solomon here. Uh, morning, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Uh, depending on what time you're viewing this, I'm just making a quick run to the farmer's market, as some people call it, or as we say in Trinidad and Tobago, the market. It's just the market. Um, to get some produce, uh, vegetables and fruits. I felt like having some fruit this morning um, as many of you probably know I started and I'm in my truck so this truck is a little bit bumpy because um, it's built on a real truck chassis and so it's not built to be smooth especially if it's just one person in it it's really built for load um, as some of you know those of you who follow me on on um, on LinkedIn uh, you probably know by now that I'm, I'm starting my PhD uh, at the University of Trinidad and Tobago and you know like like how we tend to do things or how we tend to talk about things um, my mind said okay you probably should do a video somewhere closer to the end or maybe in the middle um, to sort of talk about where things are and how you're doing and so on um, I decided though that I want to try and chronicle this um, over time just to see you know how it came about um, how it's going and then eventually how it's been these videos are not gonna be um, scripted they're not gonna be in the studio I'm gonna do them when I have time and I really do apologize for the bumpiness of this of the, of the movement but I explained that before um, so 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 why a PhD well first of all uh, I'm dyslexic as some of you know I've, I've always made that very public um, B's and D's didn't make sense in my brain until I was probably about eight or nine. Uh, eight, the sounds of A E I O U in the English language are still very confusing to me, and I still have trouble figuring out which one belongs where. Um, notwithstanding that, though, uh, I think most people have some kind of disability, and that just happens to be one of mine. Um, but my mother has always said uh, to me as a child that. Things, those things shouldn't stand in your way. What you should do is just focus, put your head down, keep working, and things will reveal their, their secrets to you. Um, and I found that to be to be a truth or a reality in, in my own journey. Um, but but closer to YPG, I never thought as a younger person of, of getting this far as far as education was concerned. Uh, it wasn't a dream. Um, no one in my immediate family uh, when I was much younger, had gone uh, to this extent. Uh, my, my parents, neither of them uh, went to high school. My mother didn't finish primary school. Um, my parents were very intelligent, both of them. My mother had a photographic memory. Uh, my father sat on several boards, uh, but they just didn't take this route. And and my eldest brother eventually went on to, be, to get a doctorate and I was much, much later in life. Uh, but as a child, I didn't have a picture of that kind of possibility and therefore it wasn't something that I, I thought of doing. Um, never really saw myself in that way. But I found that in life, if you just put one foot in front of the other and you're pointed in the right direction, you can get really far ahead, uh, really, really far down the road. And uh, I guess that's what happened to me, one foot in front of the other. Uh, when I was finishing my second MBA, I thought, why not? Why not do a doctorate? Why not go further? Because um, something that many people don't know, I actually like school. I actually like the experience of learning. Uh, I actually like the environment. And so I look, I've always looked forward to going to school um, from, from a pretty early age. Um, I've struggled at school for a long time when I was much younger. And once I figured it out, it, it, it was not a struggle anymore. You just need to be disciplined and do the work. But I like learning and I like school. So uh, when I was doing my second MBA, I thought, hmm, why not? Let me explore this. Of course, by that time, there were a lot more opportunities in terms of types of doctorates. Um, of course, there's the, the, the good old PhD. Um, but of course, there's there, there are DBAs, Doctor of Business Administration, um, Doctor of Engineering, there are all kinds of doctorates. Uh, and I thought about it and I started to look. However, 
uh, I put some really hard requirements um, for a program that would suit my needs. One, I did not want to spend months and months and years doing coursework. I was not impressed or interested in sitting and listening to uh, what somebody has already discovered. One, I've done two master's degrees. Two, Google already knows everything. So I don't need content. I wasn't interested in that. Secondly, I wasn't interested in a program that would have me write exams. I don't think they prove very much in this field. Um, and so I didn't see the point. Uh, thirdly, I was not prepared to spend lots and lots of hundreds of thousands of TT Trinidad and Tobago dollars or uh, large amounts of money. I, I'm really upset about the student debt crisis in places like the United States um, and in other parts of the world and what it costs to get an education. I, didn't, I don't think people should have to pay that much. And so I put a very low limit in terms of what I was willing to spend um, on, a, on a doctorate. Um, so I put those hard limits in place. Um, in addition to that, uh, the question is, well, why? Why would you want to get a PhD? Uh, I mean, uh, there's no promotion. Lots of people want to do um, higher ed and tertiary ed for, for promotions and to make more money. I've been in my own business for over two decades. Um, I think I've done fairly well. Uh, and so uh, promotions and money and positions and those kinds of things uh, were not very interesting to me. But what is and continues to be interesting is to figure out things. Um, and a series of events caused me to uh, recognize or realize a, a, a possible connection between work ethic and personality types. Actually, it started off with competitiveness of nations and personality types. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm, my, my research is going to be in that area. That's what I was interested in researching. Um, because PhD work requires you to you know, do new research to discover new knowledge, come up with something different, something new, add to the body of work. So, um, so that was the why. Um, I literally searched around the world. The hard requirements that I mentioned before uh, are not easy to, to, to find in one place. Uh, I pretty much, as a result, ruled out, if not all, but most universities in the United States um, of course, oh, I should use my next hand. Sorry about that. I was just moving a, a message. Um, oh, I'll edit that out. Of course, um, there were some options in other countries. Uh, I, but I, the model that I, I was interested in, I found in South Africa, actually got accepted by a couple of universities in South Africa uh, due to a number of, of, of challenges, including the shortage of of PhD supervisors in South Africa and some differences in their, the way they match qualifications to other parts of the world, um, that those options didn't work out for me. But interestingly, one morning I was searching, it may have been night, I don't know, I was searching the internet for um, different PhD programs and I discovered that the University of Trinidad and Tobago had a, a PhD program and they didn't name it. They didn't say it was a PhD in engineering or business or anything in particular. It was just a PhD. Uh, so I called and um, eventually was able to put in um, an application and got accepted into that program. Why choose the University of Trinidad and Tobago? Well, one, it fit my criteria, um, the aforementioned or the aforelisted criteria one. Uh, two, the University of Trinidad and Tobago, of course, is in Trinidad and Tobago, um, so it doesn't require travel. I have quite a bit of travel as things stand, and so um, that'd be great not to have to travel for that for school. Uh, thirdly, why the University of Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, the price point can't be beat. Uh, you can check this online if you want to. Uh, the program, at least for TNT Nationals, literally costs 24,000 Trinidad and Tobago dollars, and to my US friends, that's just north of, uh, or just south of 4,000 US dollars. This is for the entire program, that's your tuition. Um, registration is, is, is uh, pretty low. Uh, I think I paid, or I'm supposed to pay uh, 440 Trinidad and Tobago dollars, which is about what? 
uh, maybe about 70 US dollars for registration. I think that's per year or per semester. And they run a two semester program per year. Um, it's per, per semester. Uh, and the program can be completed in three years. Fully accredited, of course, that was a requirement. Fully accredited. So uh, I took a long time. Um, I actually started my search for a program that fit my requirements in 2015. Um, the year I finished my second master's program. And uh, this is 2019. I'm actually starting out in 2019. The journey has been interesting because one of the things that was required for some of the programs that I applied to was I had to develop a complete proposal. I remember for one university, University of Stellenbosch in South Africa, uh, my proposal, including all citations and everything, I think was 70 something pages. Um, so you have to you have to do real research and write um, and come up with your methodology and so on uh, before you actually put forward an application. That was part of the application package. Um, so uh, I've, I've improved my research and writing skills. Um, of course, seventy something pages is nothing in comparison to what the final uh, the final piece of research is going to be. And I'm just letting some people go past on the street here. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what, what that is going to be like. But uh, one of the questions someone has asked me is that why are you starting a PhD at this age? Well, I'm going to address the, I've already addressed the why, but I want to address the age issue. I don't see age as having anything to do with this. Uh, I think age is really irrelevant to the discussion. Um, uh, I, I was talking to my youngest daughter, she's 18, and I, I was working out for her how she can have a, a PhD in another eight or nine years if she really wants to. Um, so, you know, whether you do it at early age or older age, I, I don't, for me, I don't see any of that as being relevant. I think what is relevant is if you have a working brain as, as I do, thankfully, um, and you, you believe that you want to accomplish something, you believe that there's something out there for you to do, keep learning uh, go for what you would like to accomplish um, enjoy the journey and, and that's one of the things I want to do I, I'm gonna try and do these chronicles uh, ever so often I don't want to say weekly and then I don't do it weekly but ever so often so I'm gonna call these the the PhD chronicles yeah I'm gonna chronicle my journey over the next uh, two maybe three years they told me three I am ambitious so I said I can do it in two I'll probably um, let's see how that works out. let me don't speak negative over it but let's see if, if that's going to be a reality. But PhD Chronicles, uh, let's see how this goes over the next few years. Um, looking forward to the journey. See you soon.